Breastfeeding intake assessment is how we can tell if a baby is feeding well at the breast. It is important to assess breastfeeding intake to ensure that adequate milk transfer is occurring during the feed, meaning that the baby is drinking enough milk from the breast. Good milk transfer is necessary to ensure the baby is getting enough nutrition for best growth and adequate fluid intake. For the hospitalized baby, it is especially important for the staff and families to be able to assess intake so that the healthcare team can feel confident in allowing babies who are recovering to feed at the breast. To assess intake at the breast, the feed needs to be observed for a good latch, swallowing, and signs that milk is going from breast to baby. Baby's pees, poos, and weight gain also need to be monitored. The key to intake assessment is to consider all these parts together to get a complete understanding of how well a baby is breastfeeding. Each part will be addressed in this video. It is helpful to use a breastfeeding record to monitor breastfeeding, intake and output while you are establishing breastfeeding. You can ask your nurse for one of these or print one from our website. First, we need to ensure the baby is being fed when hungry and alert. A lot of the babies at SickKids are on a feeding schedule, but towards discharge may move to regular cue-based feeding, which means that feed starts when the baby shows signs of hunger and stops when the baby appears full. Some early signs that a baby is ready to feed are stirring, rapid eye movements during sleep, sucking sounds, soft cooing or sighing, mouth opening, hand-to-mouth or suckling, licking movements, rooting. Late signs include fussiness and irritability, exhaustion, sleep, crying. Once this happens, it is important to calm the baby before starting the feed as the baby will have difficulty latching because the tongue is not in proper placement. Some babies at SickKids may not show these signs depending on their medical condition, medications, and feeding schedule. Newborns usually feed 8 to 12 times a day and take 20 to 45 minutes to complete a feed. Older babies may feed less frequently and for a shorter time as they become more efficient at the breast. On the breastfeeding record, track the time to start each feed and the time at the breast. The frequency and duration of the breastfeed can also be impacted by additional supplementation, fortified feeds, IV fluids, TPM, or medication. Medical or surgical conditions may also influence the baby's endurance and their ability to take in a full feed at the breast. It is also important to look at the latch. Look for the following things when assessing a baby's latch. A wide open mouth. The angle of the corner of the mouth should be greater than 130 to 150 degrees and the corners of the mouth don't touch. The baby's chin is touching the breast. The baby comes to the breast chin first. The head is slightly tilted back and nose is not touching the breast. The latch is asymmetrical. More of the areola, the dark area around the nipple, can be seen above the top lip than below the bottom lip. The lips are flanged out. Once the baby is latched, it is important to recognize if the baby is swallowing milk or just suckling at the breast with no milk going to the baby. You can listen for swallows, especially in the beginning of the feed. Swallows sound like a ka sound. You can also look for swallows. To see them, look for the open, pause, close pattern of the mouth when the baby is sucking. This can be most visible by watching the downward movement of the baby's lower jaw. The jaw opens wider, then there's a slight pause, 
then closes. It can be hard to notice this jaw movement at first, but with practice, it soon becomes easier to see the swallows. In the first few days after birth, when there is colostrum available in the breast, less frequent swallowing is normal, as it may take many sucks to get a swallow. Breast milk usually increases in volume two to four days after birth. At the beginning of the feed, as baby suckles to stimulate the milk flow, also known as letdown, you may see short, quick sucks. Letdown usually happens within one to two minutes of sucking, and you should then notice the sucks become longer and slower, with the swallow for every suck. As the feed progresses, you will see more sucks before a swallow, indicating that the breast is emptying. After the first few days following birth, the amount of swallowing can be a good sign of the mother's milk supply. If the baby is latched on well and actively sucking, but not getting many swallows, this may be a sign of a low milk supply. On the breastfeeding record, place a check mark if you notice swallows. When the baby is breastfeeding, look for these signs to tell if the baby is drinking milk. A change in sucking pattern to the open, pause, close pattern just discussed. Milk is seen in the baby's mouth when the latch is released. Babies often go to the breast with clenched hands when they're hungry, and the hands relax as they become full. The baby is no longer showing signs of hunger. Remember that the sick baby may become sleepy or may not show signs of hunger due to their medical condition or medications. Another indication of whether the baby is getting enough milk is their elimination pattern. For the first six days, the baby should have as many wet diapers as days old. The diaper should get heavier with urine every day, especially after the third day as the supply of breast milk increases. Once the baby is six days old, they should have six to eight soaked diapers in 24 hours. The baby should have at least one stool per day in the first two days of life and then at least two to three stools per day from day three onward. These should each be about two tablespoons in size. Many breastfed babies have a bowel movement with every feed. The stool should be changing over the first four to five days from dark meconium on day one to two to brown green stools on day three to four as the milk starts to transition from colostrum to mature milk. By day five, as your milk comes in, the stools become soft, seedy yellow. Once the baby is older than four weeks, the pattern of bowel movements may change to one stool every one to 10 days. If the baby's stomach is soft, the baby is content, feeding well and having six to eight heavy diapers every 24 hours, this small number of bowel movements is normal. The changes in elimination matches with the changes in milk volume and composition in the first week as it changes from colostrum to mature milk. This also matches up with the size of the baby's stomach in the first week, which starts out at about the size of a cherry, needing only 5 milliliters per feed on day 1 to the size of an egg by day 10, where it can take 60 to 80 milliliters. While your baby is hospitalized, the nurses may weigh your baby's wet diapers to measure the urine output. In this case, you can ask the nurse to feel what a heavy, wet diaper feels like. It should weigh 30 to 60 grams, which is the same as two to four tablespoons on a dry diaper. You can also squeeze the outside of the diaper to feel the different jelly-like texture when wet as opposed to the cotton-like texture when dry. If you are concerned that the baby is not getting enough milk, you can check the baby's urine color by tearing open the front of the wet diaper. The urine should be clear to pale yellow. On the breastfeeding record, place a check mark each time the baby has a wet or dirty diaper. The best signal of whether a baby is getting enough milk is the weight gain. It is normal for breastfed newborns to lose seven to 10% of their birth weight in the first few days. Usually, by day four, the baby should stop losing weight and by two weeks, the birth weight should have been regained. Once the birth weight has been regained, babies should gain 20 to 
35 grams on average per day over the next few months. When your baby is at sick kids, they will likely be getting weaned once every 24 hours to monitor their growth. This can be a useful tool to assess how breastfeeding is going. Once you're at home, regular visits to your baby's doctor will include a weight check to make sure your baby is getting enough milk. The healthcare team will also be taking into consideration additional fluids and supplemental feeding when looking at daily weight gain. On the breastfeeding record, track the amount of supplementation given and whether it was expressed breast milk or formula. There are also signs of milk transfer a parent may feel during a feed, including feeling a letdown, a tingling, warmth, or prickling sensation when the milk starts to flow. Not all breastfeeding parents feel this. Milk leaking from the opposite breast. In the first week after birth, more uterine cramping or bleeding during breastfeeding. Feeling relaxed or sleepy. This is from the increased release of the hormone oxytocin that triggers the letdown. The breast feeling less full or softer after the feed compared to before the feed. If the parent has been exclusively pumping and is now starting to breastfeed, the current milk supply needs to be considered in relation to the baby's feeding needs. The amount of milk produced per pumping session should be similar, if not more, than the baby's feeding requirements. For example, if the baby needs to drink 65 milliliters every three hours and the parent has been pumping 30 milliliters every three hours, the baby will need to be given supplementation until the required volume is reached. If you want to know the approximate amount that the baby has taken from the breast, you can do test weights, which will be discussed in a moment. If the parent is producing more than the baby is taking at the breast, the parent will need to continue to pump immediately after breastfeeding to maintain their milk supply for future feeding requirements. Sometimes, having the baby feed at the breast may increase the amount of milk that is produced over time. On the breastfeeding record, track the amount of milk pumped. Another tool for assessing milk intake at the breast is doing a test weight, which involves weighing the baby before and immediately after the feed to measure volume of intake. You can learn more about this in part two of this video. It is important to look at all the indicators together to get a clear picture of how well the baby is feeding at the breast. If you are ever concerned that the baby is not getting enough milk, please talk to a healthcare provider.